The Game of Thrones. This, of course, isn't about the TV show that got us on the edge of our seats by HBO. This, actually, is about the shift of power in the most populous black nation in 2023. Before I proceed, an overview of the state of politics as is. First, political parties. I know most Nigerians are not aware, but there are 18 functional parties in the country, according to INEC, as of now. The ruling party, of course, has stuttered in World Congress and has no elected ex -school. Other parties are yet to clearly define opposition and make the right moves, proposing the right solutions while galvanizing the electorate's support. They play the same game and expect a different outcome. You can't always preach. We are going to, if you vote us in, we will change it. We've heard that music a lot, a lot in Africa, and it's changed nothing. Secondly, the electorate. They scream good governance, which couldn't be louder or more agitated from a distance, from understanding the true power that has never been so far away from them. A little example. The wokest state in Nigeria is always Lagos. But when you weigh that wokeness against the LG elections in the mega city of wokeness, with less than 5% voting population participation, well, you have how ready we are for politics. Third, civil societies. Of course, with their grants, they look good. It's great to see the work in the space. And there are things we really need to point out to the inexperienced policy offering solutions for the politically illiterate. Now CSOs have said the PVC drive, the PVC drive. Nigeria has never actually had a PVC problem. 84 million registered voters in 2019, and yet only 28 million participated in the federal elections. CSOs have also tried to use the problem to create a valid future. What do I mean by this? Inviting the problem in the legislature to teach the future how to handle politics. The media houses. You'd love to think of them as the fourth estate. But in actuality, they are the third legs of politicians for brown envelopes and paid time on their airwaves. The crucifixion of investigative journalism and the outright abandonment of newsworthy material makes them puppies under the dinner table of the average dinosaur politician. They ensure the miseducation of the electorate, which is the worst thing they could ever do to a weakened democratic system. Now, for us to understand this, we must understand this critical statement. The game in politics is always to unfold and is never to be told, which means indirectly you do not have access to what exactly is going to happen except you understand the way the chess pieces move. In 2023, there will be a generational shift. A lot of people will love to hear this, but it's not the generation you're thinking it will be. The generation that will take over power have served as ministers and governors and want a seat at the table. But I'll tell you there's little good news somewhere down the line. As long as any generation is not strategic and unified, it will be lost in the ballot. Another good news for 2023 is that a lot of political dynasties will fall. And this will be because of the loss of power that occurs in any changing government. There will be a lot of intra-party tussles. And most of all, a weakened political structure by the two usual suspect political parties. But most of all, poor dominance by any political heavyweight in nation spread. The electorate at this rate will be at its most gullible ever in 2023, leading to bad political structures to the throne, which once again will bring in a government that does not know the constitution while in governance and be pregnant with corruption. Let's also add at this point that political literacy will be the, at the highest level possible. 
If you thought this different, let me ask a question. Deep in your heart, do you know your local government chairman? And in case you do, do you know he has no immunity? The way forward. One, we must come up with a unified front. For once, we must build a new tribe. And that tribe, we must be nepotic to. And the name of that tribe is being Nigerian. It must, superfi or it must supersede any religion, ethnic bias, or thought process which limits our front. This is the only way we can pick someone, not from the usual he has structure, which means he drives his G class and has 16 PAs, but a Nigerian who actually wants to represent the people. Secondly, we must have a clear understanding that we cannot survive as a nation with eight more years of bad governance. If there is a repeat of what we have faced presently over the last time within democracy or the last 21 years of democracy, there will be no country called Nigeria. The mismanagement of corruption, funds and people will be destructive. Third, political literacy and participation is most necessary to change governance. Now, by participation, you think I'm going to ask you to vote? No, I won't ask you to vote. And I'll give you an example. It's better we have an influx into political parties that ensures that we can, of course, change the kind of people that are in primaries and all political parties produce good candidates. Then we can leave it for 2 million people to vote at the, at the general elections. The time to start this, I will tell you, is yesterday. If Nigeria fails, the entire black race fails. Okay, well, I, <laughs> if Nigeria fails, the entire black, feel, uh, entire black race will fail. I wonder why I'm stuttering. Maybe I need some chicken. But, um, <laughs> 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 but it's, I, okay, let me take it from that before I even go to the Nigerian bit. So that's simply to say Africa is where the black race is where it is today because of the current state of Nigeria, because okay. we are not doing as well. Yeah. So if we feel further, that's what we are saying, that the entire black race will feel. But now, bringing it back home, I believe that you've expressed a lot of my fears, my concerns, and my views in your narration. Um, I believe that the our approach to governance and politics over the years has been wrong. We've not, we the people, we have not had our own voice and ideologies. There is no we the people. Okay, the individuals who make up citizens of Nigeria. All right, we've not had our own voice, and by that I mean that we trumpet what a politician has said. It's not anything that will favor us as a people. That, okay, we know that this is what will favor me as a person. So what you're saying now, if you were to tell them and say, okay, it's about joining a political party, a lot of people will disagree. That don't just go around uh, saying you want to you want to vote alone. Infiltrate the political parties. Have a say. Influence who who the nominees are. And that has always been my view because we're not doing enough. Nigerians are at a point, that's why in my earlier um, my presentation I said we're broken. We don't see the light anymore. We've come to a state where we're stagnated. All we like to do is complain. So 2023, like you're saying, you've outlined all the do's and don'ts. How many of us even believe in those do's and don'ts? How many of us even understand it? So for us to even be able to achieve these do's and don'ts, I think it comes back to what you're doing, and we need to make it larger and what a lot, a lot more people are doing as well, which is educating the average Nigerian on what it takes to get into politics in Nigeria, what your rights are, saying uh, you have the right to vote out the local government chairman, what um, you really want or you deserve as a people, we don't know anymore. Mm -hmm. Because now everybody's talking about 2023 and all we are saying is, Anything but worry. And I ask, I say, okay, hold up. You can see that I'm not related to him. We're all suffering the same stuff. But we said anything but Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Now we're saying anything but worry. What are we going at? Who are we as a people? And we're accusing the politicians. Are we analyzing what we're doing? You talk about doing things differently. If you keep doing the same thing the same way, we say it's a madman that does the same thing the same way and expect a change. Anything but worry. Anything but Jonathan, now anything but Buari, whoever comes in, anything but that after four years? I don't know. So listen, if most people, right, are, mm. again, thinking about their daily needs, how much time do they have to really dissect 
the meat of governance, mm. of what it means. So they just know what they don't want. But what the average person doesn't think about is that it can't just be what you don't want, right? You have needs that are not being met, which is why you're struggling, which is why you have no time to address or look at these things. We need people who are running in government to understand our needs. But we also need ourselves to understand our needs. That's it. And therefore, what we need to do to make sure our needs are met. And I think that is what Kunle is getting at, is that, you know, and, and um, Uluwa Kaede you're getting at, is that there's a lot of talk, right? Yeah. We, we say we want this, but at the end of the day, it's anything but anything mm, yeah. this. And then we'll go on and complain mm. again. Mm. But really, it would be helpful, like, the work you do is amazing, yeah. right? So if more people, or it could be rolled out on a, wise, a wider basis, so that it's not just the average gov um, citizen that doesn't mm. understand governance. It's beyond the average. Yeah, it's but, actually yeah. most of the population. And so if we kind of address this, we have to really go back to the basics again in everything. And really, it's like baby, it's like weaning. Mm. Right? Mm. We have to take people back to the milk. Yeah. And that takes Understand a lot of work. Understand that. It takes a lot of work and it takes commitment. Mm. And there are young pe people like Kune who are committed to this. So we need to find a way to engage and empower and for those in power to understand that this actually benefits them for this to happen. I think there's a lot of fear for them aside of losing power, fear of change because you feel that people come after you when you leave or that um, you will have that loss of power because mm. power is everything. Um, but I think they also fail to understand that these things happening can actually benefit both those in power and also the citizens, you know, well, in average oh, life. Yeah. Um, mm. I think I, I would come from the angle of um, voting within parties because, I mean, I'm on the school of thought that democracy is not for an uneducated society. Like mm, preach, girl. So, <laughs> <laughs> preach. So, um, because, I mean, we, are, we end up selecting mm -hmm. the majority, what yeah. the majority goes for, mm -hmm. and if the majority doesn't really understand what is happening, or what governance is like, then we end up selecting what kind of leaders we've had in the past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, but now that you um, um, he made mention, Kune made mention of um, going into um, the primaries, being involved in the politics, yeah. and then making that decision to mm -hmm. influence the kind of people that are selected in primaries, I think it's now making more sense to me. And I'm thinking, okay, this is an opportunity for smart minds mm -hmm. to actually go into politics because sometimes yeah. i mean I, ha I have conversations with um, some people um smart nigerians doing great stuff and ask them okay so how about going into politics and their re typical response is mm -hmm. like they don't want to dirty themselves hmm. um they don't want to be involved in all of those things mm -hmm. because for them politics for them is i have to take on a position but if they get to just understand that as a card carrying a member of a political party, I can decide, I can influence the kind of people that would be put forward yeah. in the president for the presidential election or gubernatorial election or even our states. That in itself would, would sort of be like a mind shift and yeah. sort of influence or make them want to decide to go into. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, you know, politics. talking about people and the influence of people, one thing that scares me a lot is in Nigeria today, unfortunately, everything has to be binary. You must either hate Buhari mm -hmm. or love him. We don't discuss issues where we say, okay, this thing Buhari did is good, this thing he did is bad. Once you start saying good or bad, I say, oh, you're unstable. Exactly. <laughs> so, okay, guys, um, I must say, if we continue this conversation, mm -hmm. it will take a very long time. Yeah. Nigeria has always run a selection and not an election because mm -hmm. we rarely participate in the process. So rounding up here today is Tonya. Do stay tuned.